Well, uh, welcome to this May 27th full range tasting from the Great Drowns Independent Bottlers of Scotch Whiskey. We're going to be going through five whiskies um, over the next however long and I urge you to ask any and all questions. I'll be standing here talking you through each and every one of them and then I'll be flicking between camera and laptop uh, answering your questions, going through the chat and making sure that everyone's okay. And what we normally do is, whilst you guys who are listening to this live right now are clearly winning for being here on time, um, what I normally do is give a couple of minutes grace period whilst I set the tech up on the laptop, now it's all linked and live, and allow all the stragglers to come along. So sit back, pick up your favourite glass, think about uh, your favourite whiskey and what's going to happen this evening, and pour the first one, which is the Port Dundas. That's where we're going to start today, and I'll be with you in just a second. like things might actually be working. Um, got a couple of people messaging asking how to get on. If you're asking how to get on, you're messaging me through the exact same page you should be on. It's the Great Drivers Facebook page and obviously you won't hear this until you're on, but you will in time. That's fine. Okie dokie. So, Let's get this loaded up and what I'm going to do is send the link to Anders especially who is asking me where the video is. Here we go. So, happy days. I hope you're all well, safe, doing all the stuff you're supposed to be doing during lockdown and somehow trying to be positive and, and maintain spirits through it. Um, it's been an interesting uh, time here at uh, Great Drowns HQ uh, doing virtual tastings. Some of you may not uh, have known we didn't do virtual tastings before lockdown. It all started on a whim on one of our government sanctioned walks around the village of Poynton where we live just south of Manchester and I said to my wife Kirsty who's my business partner in Great Drowns co-founder, um, shall I put up, is it in good taste to put up virtual whiskey tasting in a couple of weeks and see if people care enough to get involved and spend a night in with us effectively. And she said, oh, you know what, mm, hummed and hard and said, yeah, go on, put it up. And uh, we both thought, you know, if we get 20 people involved, that'd be great. And have a bit of a laugh and uh, talk about whiskey and do some really cool stuff. And at first tasting, we had 212 people get involved. So it blew us away. And so we've been doing them ever since. Really good fun for us. Uh, logistically, it's always quite a challenge. And good, but you know, hey, it's part of the gig. Um, and I get to talk, stand up here and talk about something I massively love and I hope that will come across uh, through the course of the evening and because there is there is no greater thing in my life apart from my wife and family obviously that I spend more time thinking about and talking about and actively doing as uh, as working in the whiskey industry uh, creating limited edition uh, whiskey releases uh, to the Great Drowns brand and also working as a consultant within the industry uh, with most of the big players in the category to uh, mostly on their new product development and their innovation um, as well as their packaging and brand strategy and proposition work. So I'm going to check that Anders got in, um, especially as he was the one messaging many many times. He says invalid link. My friend, I don't know what more I can do than copy and paste the link in. Right, we're going to have one more go and then I'm going to have to crack on unfortunately. Um, Excellent. Lots of you commenting. Marvellous. 111 of you on board already. Fantastic. Welcome. Uh, um, Ken, I'm not technically a scouter as I'm a West Londoner by, by birth, but my phone has a red cover, my shoes have a live bird on them, and there is a canvas actually just over there, which has my son and I, well, my firstborn son and I in our Liverpool shirts. So, adopted scouts and, you know, cop season ticket and all that kind of stuff. Apologies if that offends anyone. Um, Josie, no, we won't be drinking Malibu tonight, although Malibu Bob, um, who's a friend of mine from, uh, from locally, but also from our, 
our Point and Whiskey Club, which I set up last year. Um, I hope he'll be he'll be on tonight and having a quick look at the video. Uh, and he's already had a shout out accidentally. And hello to those in Sweden. I must mention Anders, um, and I hope the third link I sent you does actually work, um, because I've got no other way of getting you on here. It's just on the Facebook page, and it should just pop up. Uh, naturally and um, so best of luck with that but hello to all of you from Sweden uh, who have got involved tonight we sent over a nice big care package of uh, whiskey uh, samples to to you guys and I, I hope you truly hope you enjoy them and uh, know this is a first for many of you doing whiskey tasting through screens so interesting I'd like to hear your feedback afterwards uh, Mr Bishop I am at it again always um, hello everyone uh, <laughs> interesting, Ken. Uh, it will be 19 in a few weeks to answer your question. Um, we will be starting with the uh, Port Dundas. So just to kind of recap, those of you who may not necessarily have been here on time at half past, I wasn't. I was a minute and a half late due to tech uh, logins. Um, we are Great Drams, independent uh, bottler of uh, Scotch whiskey. And it's a family business, an award-winning family business, I should say. A couple of them are there. Um, Cheshire Drinks Producer of the Year, currently, uh, have been now for a while. And we, we've, we've enjoyed that greatly, um, amongst other things. And so what my wife and I, who are our business partners in this and founders in this, do is select casks, um, unique and interesting casks, from around the world of whiskey. And then what we, we subsequently do is mature them in a warehouse up in Scotland, until we feel that the absolute perfect flavor profile for bottling. Um, we don't target an age, we don't target anything else really, apart from does this taste like something I would want to personally buy a case of? Yes, boom. Let's hit, hit the bottling uh, kind of authorization, get it in the queue, get it bottled. Um, so that, that's our kind of process. And so far we've, we've picked up quite a few awards along the way. Um, our very first release, the Invergordon 11 year old, Single grain uh, picked up the, it's actually a silver medal. That silver for us is bonkers amazing for our first release in the Independent Bottlers Challenge. Um, and uh, SMWS just beat us. It's gold. But, you know, they've been around 37 years or so, so I think we can allow them that. Um, and then our, one of our releases, Gervin, which we won't be trying tonight, um, is it picked up double gold at the Great Taste Awards last year and also was awarded by Jim Murray. Um, technically the first, well, effectively, the first uh, whiskey reviewer, writer to be well known. Um, uh, he has that hat um, and publishes his whiskey bible every year. He awarded our Gervin 91.5 points out of 100 last year, uh, which blew us away. We, we couldn't have expected more, maybe nice too, but you know. Um, so, so yeah, we, we, we take our time choosing our casks. We take our time understanding what we want from each one. What flavour profile, and and when we're ready, boom, we make it happen. So most importantly, pick up that first glass, which is Port Dundas. I'm going to lift up the bottle so you can see what that looks like, and it's right there. Um, and so this is a ten-year-old single cask from the Port Dundas Distillery, which no longer exists, um, and not just a silent or dead distillery uh, in 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 words. It's actually been demolished. I think it's a some kind of car park or I think Ken told me last time it's some kind of flats or something so um, so yeah it literally doesn't exist anymore um, I just had a message saying broadcast interrupted that's not great news um, and uh, so Port Dundas 10 year old single cast single grain scotch whiskey at uh, one point the Port Dundas distillery was an icon of the lowlands, an icon of Glasgow. And it nowadays sadly doesn't exist. Um, it was torn down, I think it was in, closed down in 2010, torn down in 2011. And this car dates back to the 13th of October in 2009. So one of the last batches um, to come out from the distillery and to be filled into casks. Um, and then we bought it, and I've always wanted a dead distillery in our range. I've actually always wanted a dead distillery bottle in my collection. Um, and so when I had the opportunity, I didn't bat an eyelid. I literally bought it without sampling it because I really just felt like A, I wanted it, but B, I knew it was going to be good. So the reputation and everything that goes around it. 
Only 193 bottles uh, were yielded from this cask. So super limited edition, launched uh, a couple of weeks before lockdown. So uh, it's not had its, uh, its fair share of events as it normally would have, um, but it's sold incredibly well. And so there's not, not a huge amount of this guy left. But it's a 10 year old and hopefully when you're sipping it, um, you'll, you'll get the same or similar or same notes as me of it being really smooth, really easy drinking. Have a nice kind of vanilla -y, uh, buttery note to it, but then a lovely refreshing cut through of citrus as well. So, for those of you who haven't necessarily uh, done a whiskey tasting before or have done tried whiskey at the pace that we do uh, when we do tastings, which is a slow pace, um, so how we taste whiskey kind of professionally or in the trade or when we do things like this is try this. You may have tried it already, you may have noticed it already, absolutely fine. But right now, put it up to the bridge of your nose, breathe completely out through your mouth, and completely in through your nose. Now that should eventually start to sting the nostril if you're not used to it. And what that does is effectively uh, wake up your nose, which is a muscle by the way, it needs warming up, needs waking up. Um, wakes up your nose to the prospects of high ABV alcohol coming its way. Now, have a very quick sip of it. Don't labour over it. Sip it, swallow it, absolutely fine. Now, go back in and nose it. This should have opened up even more than when you first nosed or tried it. Because you're waking that palate up as well. And your tongue, it needs to again warm up. It needs to wake up and think, oh man, I need to brace myself here for something that's 48.2% ABV. I'm on it. So, have another sip. Now for me, as I said, really smooth, really easy drinking. That citrusy note, just gorgeous. It's like kind of honeycomb note comes through as well. As does, hmm, almost like a juicy fruitiness, uh, like a lemon and lime zest, as well as that cut through. Um, I find this an incredibly refreshing uh, whiskey. As I said, only 193 bottles ever produced. So it's, uh, yeah, limited edition, as all of our releases are. We pride ourselves in doing limited editions that once they're gone, they are gone. And we never repeat, so we never repeat the exact same uh, whiskey at all. Um, and we often use different distilleries. Occasionally we may go back to the same distillery in the future. Um, absolutely fine, but we'll do a different twist on it. A different cask, for example, different age, different something. So we never create the same whiskey again. There's two casks that are distilled, or the spirit was distilled the same day on the same stills filled into the same shape, size, freshness of cast, can sit next to each other for the same amount of time. And when you draw your samples from them, they can look incredibly different visually by color, but also they can taste different. They'll always have that signature distillery DNA, that flavor profile that is quintessential to every distillery has its own, um, but they'll taste different. And that's what intrigues us about single cask releases. So, whilst you're mulling that, I'm going to have a quick look at the comments and see if you've got any questions going on. For some reason, this has turned the brightness right down. It's massively unhelpful. So, here we go. Um, yeah. Hello from Middlesbrough, says Diane. Hi, Diane. Hello from Pointed. Um, excellent stuff. Tom says hi from Manchester. Hello, Tom. Um, excellent stuff, lots of hellos. Ah, uh, oh, Colin, it's your dad's birthday present. Happy birthday to your dad. Hope he's having a good lock-in, a lockdown lock-in is what I was trying to say there. Um, <laughs> uh, Kevin sat here with Wurzel Gummidge. Marvellous. I was a big fan of that show when I was a kid, by the way. Did enjoy it. Um, that's cool. It appears like there's some... Some kind of issues with the, uh, the Wi-Fi, the connectivity. Some of you may have a bit of a blurry visual um, uh, at the minute. I do apologise. Um, I'm guessing it's because everyone on the planet is online constantly, currently. Uh, so I do apologise for that. I will, at some point, have a quick look behind the camera and see if I can change the network. Um, so bear with me and do bear with me on that. I do apologise. Um, Graham asked if you can see the bottle again. Of course you can. 
Um, hopefully that shows you the bottle. And the uh, it's, you can get the, the actual uh, bottle image is on the, uh, the Chrome Trans website uh, in high res, super high res. So you'll be able to see all the detail on there as well if the uh, blurriness continues. Um, and yes, so there was a question that just came up. Uh, oh, I can't remember who asked it. Kevin Harris, how often do I sample? Very good uh, question. Oh, John Lang, hello to all seven of you in Angus. Um, we sample our casks regularly throughout the year. I get samples sent down from the warehouse team of every single cask we have. Uh, only small samples, obviously. Um, probably every maybe three to four months, maybe four months actually. Uh, and then when, one, when I feel like one's coming closer to release, uh, I get it sent down more regularly, just so I can make sure the quality is there, the flavor profile's there. Um, and we're not going too far in any direction as well. Uh, I often get a little bit nervous when we get towards release that let's not overcook it. If it's if I feel like it's ready, we do it um, instead of uh, just kind of eking it out to get to another another number, a higher number on the bottle label, for example. So every release we've uh, ever released to date, and I hope going forward, it makes no sense not to, um, has an age statement on it um, from our youngest being five-year-old, which will be the last one we try tonight, the Ben React up to our 12 year old, which is the penultimate one we'll try tonight. And so we try them regularly through the year and we make decisions based on what we're sampling. Um, we try them with different strengths as well. So we typically bottle either 46.2 or 48.2 ABV. And um, that's all done on based on the cast samples and how, how we feel it's developed and which, which ABV will work better with it. Um, and then as we're doing that, we progress towards bottling. Um, so one of them, that finished Craig Ellicke, which I may, may have mentioned before, which I you know, absolutely loved it, but it was our very first uh, finish, uh, which means taking the spirit from one cask, all of it, same spirit, out, and putting it into another um, to finish it off for six months. Um, that was the first time we'd ever done it, and I was bricking it, absolutely bricking it, because um, I'd never done it. I didn't know if the cask was good enough. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if I was going to over-sherry finish it, and absolutely screw the pooch on the flavour profile, or if I was going to under it, I would have to do it for like two years instead of the planned six months. So there's a lot of variables, and that one I got samples sent down constantly. Um, no hardship, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it was nerve-wracking. So when we got to four and a half months, I think it was, I was like, this is, this is banging, this is what we want, um, let's just give it a few more weeks, and then it ticked to literally just six months, and I was like, make it happen. Get that thing bottled right now. So... Um, I am going to see if there are any other questions. Um, loads and loads of comments, fantastic. Uh, yes, it is very smooth for such a high ABV, um, says Lewis. Um, this is the Port Dundas, remember, we're still on the first whiskey, just getting, uh, getting acquainted with it ourselves. Um, John Lang, a big happy birthday to you, sir. Big Dundee United fan. Um, I hope you're having a belter of an evening. Um, well played. And let's see what else is going on. Uh, <laughs> um, some comments about Liverpool, fair play to you. Kate Hughes, happy birthday to your mother. I hope she's also having a good one. Um, Sweden, my friends in Sweden. We did mention you in the beginning, but I have a feeling you, got, you weren't on at that point. I hope you're all well enjoying this and are finally able to view properly. Um, this is, uh, yeah, it's a first, first time for a few of you, so let's hope. Um, let's hope you guys enjoy it and come back for more. The running order tonight, Matthew's just asked, uh, Port Dundas, batch two, the seven-year-old, then Glenn Tocker's 10-year-old, then batch three, blended malt, 12-year-old, and then Ben Riek at the end. And Ben Riek, by the way, we only have six bottles left, which we found the other day whilst doing a stock take, and they're on the website now. Um, so that's, that's your starter pistol. Um, Andy thinks he's gonna have, have a kebab after this. Why the hell not? Why not? That's absolutely fine. And yes, uh, Kim, this one does take water, very interestingly. Uh, <laughs> um, now, now, uh, Josie. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yes, the, um, uh, what say, this does take water, quite interestingly, and it opens it up. But just put a few drops in, don't flood the thing. Um, take it down to you know, about another five, ten percent max of the volume of the, the whiskey you've got in your glass add water to that and that will open it up and it will smooth it out even more right so
So, no, David, we're not going to see the shoes today. We well, can. I mean, you can probably. All right, if I raise it up there, that's as good as you're going to get. Live a bird on the tongue. There you go. So, I'm just going to double check if I can switch network just in case it is still blurry for a few people. Bear with me one second. I say one second, I actually mean um, probably a few seconds. Come on. No, we're not finishing. We're live. We're live. Connection available. Let's go. Come on. I think we might be back on. Oh dear, oh dear. This, this is not ideal. Um, so, is anyone getting anything now on the video? I'm not. <laughs> um, We're back on. We are back on. I'm so sorry for the tech issues tonight. I literally have no idea why it's decided to do that right now. Um, all the other tastings we've done have worked absolutely perfectly. And this is, this is less than optimum, uh, one should say. Uh, so I was answering a question about our cast selection. I'll just recap that while I'm trying to load up the, uh, the feed here again. Um, so... Essentially, we choose casts based on availability, first and foremost. Um, so not every distillery allows you to use their casts, and a lot of distilleries don't like you using their names on your releases. So, um, so we, you know, we, what we do is actually, as a company, we've made a decision to pay more for our casts so that we can use the names of the distillery, because we believe in full and frank transparency, and we believe that... Um, it's ultimately what information we have about a whiskey and a cask we want you to have so that you make an informed decision based on all of the truth about it. Um, and the ultimately, we like even when it comes to the five-year-old that we're finishing on tonight, we chose to still put the age on it, even though it's a low number, because I'd rather you know what it is than mask it with a, a fluffy name. Um, as much as that's not a bad thing in certain respects, uh, from our standpoint and what we do as a business and from our proposition, it very much is about everything we know you should know as well. And that's why we answer every single question. That's why I scroll through here always to answer as many questions as physically possible um, because it, I, I always feel like, why not? I'm an uber whiskey geek. If I can answer it, I will answer it. So... Speaking of um, answering, I need to see A, if you've asked any other questions, and B, if any of you can hear me or even see me with these tech situations. Um, blurry, probably not a bad thing. You don't need to see my face or beard in HD. That's fine. Um, that's cool. Okie dokie. So more blurry than before. That is also less than optimum. Um, but that's kind of Unfortunately, how it's going to probably end up rolling for a little bit. So, um, let's see. Next is batch two. We're going to get on to the seven-year-old. Move on. Hopefully, forget about the technology. Because the technology is clearly forgetting about me. Um, batch two is <coughs> a uh, from our blended cask series. There it is. Not that you can see it because it'll be so blurry, but just on the off chance it flicks into focus. Um, that is it. It's only 250 bottles released in February of this year. And it is um, what we call our blended car series. So essentially what we do with our blended car series, we released our first one for Christmas, dubbed Christmas 2019. And the idea was to make sure that, you know, we create a flavor profile that was reminiscent of Christmas. So it's a marzipan and winter fruit notes. With this one, I wanted something a bit lighter, a bit fresher, a bit fruitier. So with that, created this blend, uh, created by myself personally, all the recipes and all that kind of stuff, using three casks. Now, we do actually tell you what the casks are, which is a bit cheeky. Um, but seven years old is a point I really need to make quite strongly um, because you can only ever use the age of a whiskey, like the youngest whiskey within a, uh, a blend recipe. So I can't suddenly create a batch of whiskey 
put a teaspoon of a 25 year old in it and call it a 25 year old whiskey. That's not legally allowed. Not that we would ever do that. We're not those kind of people. So when it came to this one, actually a, a body of it, like a significant body of it, is actually 13 years old and would have been our oldest release to date. But because of how it works and how I wanted to do this, um, the, there was one grain component, which was 13 year old from North British distillery. And then two um, single malt components from the uh, Glen Murray distillery, an 11 year old from there, and then the seven year old from a first fill Ruby Port Barrique um, cask. And that's what gives it the color. That's what gives it that lovely bitter chocolate note. And that's also what gives it the seven year old age statement. Because it was so potent and so interesting at such a young age that it made absolutely no sense to keep maturing it through. Um, so we use that within the recipe here. Now let's just see if we've got any thoughts or comments going on. All right, lots of positivities, lots of people saying no worries, that's cool. Maybe blame that Cummings bloke on the old uh, uh, feed, fair enough. Or we'll, we'll endeavour to work out how I can blame him. Um, as everyone else seems to blame him, so that's all good. Um, excellent. Let's see what else is going on. So, helpfully, it's gone back to the beginning for me. It's asking me about security profiles. Who cares about security profile at a time like this? We're drinking whiskey. Um, so, that's... Again, less than optimum. Thanks, Facebook. And so on the flavour notes, on the nose, hopefully you should be getting a really vibrant uh, berry fruit note driven by the pork cask, but also a lovely vanilla and quite fresh uh, vanilla note coming from that Glen Murray cask, um, which is an ex-bourbon cask, first fill um, ex-bourbon cask, so quite a potent, quite an aggressive cask. Um, and so that's what we're looking to bring together. Disparate flavour profiles. And the, the journey or the, the, the kind of uh, nascence of this one of how it was created and how I create every blend is to actually um, put, it all starts on a post-it note. I come up with an idea for a flavor profile or a flavor brief <clears throat> that I want to create. Um, then it goes to spreadsheets, boring, but spreadsheets where I work out the initial casks that I want, a rough ratio, it's all, there's lots of different versions of everything. Um, initial ratios to get to pilot blends, what that means for stock levels and snore, 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 lots of detail behind it. Um, so we get through effectively to how much to the milliliter I would need of every single cask that I want in the blend to go into the recipe for bottling. So that it's all thought out and it will automatically, thank Christ now, it took ages to do, but to create this spreadsheet that now automatically everything feeds through right down, right down to costs and all that stuff. So we, um, yeah, so that's what we do when it comes to the blend. And we create um, pilots based on that. And then with, uh, with this one, we actually, uh, we actually uh, created, I think, I think it was 14, maybe 18 pilots. I always forget the number exactly. And um, after a few of them, it just wasn't working for me at all. The only component that was working was that 13 year old North British. So I retained that, booted out the other casks. And so what I do is actually get bigger cast samples sent down from the warehouse when I'm creating blends so that I can play about with them and if I wreck them it doesn't matter but we move on. And so I booted out the other two casts, got other cast samples sent down, of which our seven year old knock do uh, came through. And that, wow, just blew me away in its own right. But at the same time, within the blend, created something that I think is quite quite uplifting, uh, quite berry forward, quite quite nice and fresh. And so went about remaking the different proportions and redoing the pilots. And initially it all starts at 100 mil level and let it leave it for a weekend or so. Let all the flavor profiles and whiskies intertwine and all, the, all that kind of beautiful harmony and balance um, that the Japanese whiskey blenders talk about uh, naturally happen. Um, so we do that. And then when I'm happy with a few of them, it is only a few of them when it's you know four or five max, then it gets scaled up to 200 mil, then it gets scaled up to full uh, bottling size, um, and then we test the different ABVs. And so it's all about making sure that there's no screw ups along the way, um, and that it does work once you've left it for a while, the flavors still develop and they still make something quite interesting. So I love this one, and I'm hugely biased. As I said, only 250 
bottles of this uh, ever produced. Released a few weeks before lockdown. <laughs> Timing. And so from there, uh, it's been chugging away over the last few weeks and, and doing quite well, actually. I'm uh, interested to hear your thoughts. I'll check in the comments in a second. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Christian asks, hello Christian, by the way. Hope you're doing well down in France uh, with your lovely chair. Um, so, oh, sorry, quick one. Kevin Tan, what's the oldest whiskey I own? I think, I think it's about, I own a couple of 50 year olds. <gasps> um, they're 20 CLs though, so, you know, they're not, not, the, not the big, big nuts. Um, they're a couple of 40 year olds, a few, few in their 30s. Um, but the oldest I've tried is actually 75 years old. Single cask, Mortlac, um, released by Gordon McPhail, which was distilled in 1939. And gratefully, I was actually at the launch of it and got three massive measures, like massive. And so uh, had a fantastic afternoon. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Christian asks, what do you do with the leftover liquid after blending? Is there anything left in the barrel? A very, very good question. So, leftover liquid after blending, if it's the pilots, um, I normally drink them, really. Uh, over a period of time, uh, within either the office, you know, to lubricate ideas and thoughts, or I'd move them into the, uh, the house and create cocktails um, uh, with them. And when it comes to actually bottling, yes, there is always liquid left over in the cask um, because we create them in such a small, uh, small batches that you don't, uh, you don't use full casks. So, um, so some of them, that North British, for example, we use, I don't know the exact percentage offhand. Um, thankfully, I've been out of that spreadsheet for a few months, but. Um, we use a, a proportion of it, so a percentage of it, and the rest will then mature through. Maybe used in another release, like another blend, or it might be used in a single cask of its own release later down the line. The Not Do, for example, uh, was seven years old when we put it into the blend, and it's now ticked over to eight years old, and uh, it may or may not, or may um, be one of our next releases um, because I fell in love with it and just, A, I wanted it, as I said earlier. If uh, we get to a point with a flavour profile where I will personally pay for a case of it, that's when we bottle it. And with the not do, that is 100% the case. Um, yeah, I, I, I love it. So that, that will come out soon. Um, and then when that's bottled, that will be the last of that cask. So then we won't be able to use that for anything else. And in that cask, depending on how potent it is, we might keep it and re-rack, refill another cask into it for a part of our finishing program. Or if it's knackered, Turn into garden furniture. That's how it works. Um, let's see what other questions have we got coming through. Um, yes, Richard, slightly blurry, could be the whiskey. Yes, let's go with that and not uh, more technology issues. Um, and so, very interesting. Yes, David, 20, uh, 75 years old. Um, that was very cool. Definitely the chocolate note says, Josh, that comes through all from that not do cask. Um, and let's see, does the color come from the barrel, asked Richard? Yes, all of the color, all of color um, in releases such as ours, which are natural color, non-chill filtered. Um, but the, uh, all of the color comes from the barrels or the casks. Uh, certain bigger releases, I won't name names because it, it's irrelevant, but big brands, when they release like huge volume uh, releases, uh, they do add something called E150C, food grade colouring, caramel colouring. Um, it does not alter the flavour, it does not add any detriment to the whiskey. As far as I'm concerned, I believe it's, it has nothing apart from homogenised flavour. And that is mostly about the... Um, uh, the consistency for whiskey buyers. So if you see two bottles, the exact same brand and age and everything next to each other on shelf, um, if one's lighter and one's darker, which one's right, which one's faulty, are they both okay? They're questions, legitimate questions that started coming through to uh, whiskey brands in the 60s and 70s. And then they found this solution for it. Um, and it just means that when you buy day a uh, week in, hopefully not day in, day out, Week in or month in, month out, year in, year out, whatever. 
um, drink responsibly, etc. Um, your favourite whiskey is always the same colour, and and that is purely for visual and sentiment reasons, but also for um, the, the kind of confidence in the brand and uh, the product. Um, I once was in, um, let's see, where where was I? In M&S or Waitrose, one of those things in um, <coughs> Waterloo Station, buying a bottle of whiskey for a train ride down to see my mum in Dorset. I do that. Most people buy cans of gin and tonic. I buy a bottle of whiskey. It's, it's just how we roll. And I was buying it and I hadn't, hadn't seen any rain, so I asked the person behind the counter, oh, you know, any thoughts on what you guys have just released? And uh, I was told, oh, get the darker one, it's clearly better. And if my train wasn't in nine minutes, I would have sat here, got my laptop, or stood here, got my laptop out, shown you about 23 slides as to why that wasn't technically the case, and, and completely educated the person on why, why darker doesn't mean better. If you think about it, um, or if you've ever had a really old Ardbeg, for example, uh, the Ardbeg 22-year-old or 20-something-year-old, whatever they branded it as, um, gorgeous, like 300 or 400 quid bottle. And when you pour it, it's really light. Is that a bad whiskey? No. Packed with flavour, nearly a quarter of a century old, it was an absolute diamond of a dram, but not dark. And so it doesn't matter what colour the whiskey is really, if it's light and dark, it's all about the flavour profile and, uh, and then what you get from it and who you enjoy it with. Right, any other questions? Hopefully that answers that. And let's also move on to, uh, to the next one, which is the Glen Tockers. So. Um, so, Glen Tockers, it's a 10 year old um, and it was released <coughs> just before Christmas. We actually only have two cases, so what's that, 12 bottles left of this one, uh, all available on the website tonight. By the way, everything you're drinking tonight is available to buy on the website, um, so do make sure you get uh, involved. Um, and it's a, it was matured in an ex sherry cask for 10 years. And this one is one of my favourite distilleries. Uh, Glen Tocca is, is the uh, one of the one of the last remaining fully manual distilleries in uh, in Scotland. And what it is also is uh, where Shivers, uh, the Shivers brothers, owned by Perno, owned by Shivers, um, sent a lot of their production guys and girls to learn how to operate a distillery properly before um, before operating it with screens and touch pads. And, all of that jazz. Um, so that is uh, that is also wh why I fell in love with the distillery a while back. I understand there's again tech issues, which is really desperately frustrating. Um, let's just see if I can refresh anything from here. Right. So ten years old. Anyway, we'll keep going and the hope, uh, hope that it comes back in some way. Uh, oh, people are having real issues. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can change to another network. This is mental. Right. Let's try and hotspot this thing off my phone. Hopefully someone can hear me. Ah, here's another idea. I'm back. Someone says I'm back. That's good news. That is good news. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Right. Um, so, I am going to one more time attempt 
to see if anyone is here and if this thing is working. Oh man alive. Nothing like dramming under pressure. Oh, someone says crystal clear now. Graham's says for how long? Thanks, Graham. Um, good now, don't touch anything, says James. Wicked. Okie dokie. Right. So, I don't know where the hell we got up to. So we're going to start whatever I was chatting about just now. Again, about Glenn Tockers. We're on the Glenn Tockers 10-year-old single cask. Uh, single malt Scotch whiskey, and we uh, we love this distillery because it is one of the last remaining near total manual distilleries in Scotland. Uh, it's actually where uh, Perno, um, who's who owns Shivers Brothers, who owns Glen Tockers, uh, sent a lot of their uh, Shivers Brothers uh, production people to learn how to operate a distillery properly um, before being given the ones with the screens and all the fun stuff. Um, so. That is, uh, that's how, uh, how we fell in love with the distillery. I went there a couple of years ago and absolutely just loved being there. The smells, the heat from the still, everything that you want from a distillery is present. Um, and so this one we describe as being so creamy. Um, creamy AF was the, uh, the single descriptor given to me by uh, the head buyer at Milroy's of Soho when he bought a whole batch for their bar. Um, which is quite cool. I think it's also incredibly fruity, bottled at 48.2% ABV, so you have a nice punch, but also a nice creaminess and fruitiness to it. Also, a, a rather gentle um, kind of floral note comes through for me, which I massively enjoy um, in small measures. I don't like whiskey that has so much floral note that it's like tasting hay fever. That's just not what, what I'm into. But that's that's absolutely fine. Um, and ah, uh, Annika, we are on the Glen Tockers ten year old now. Um, hopefully, hopefully these are um, hopefully this is all working somehow, and people are able to hear properly. The comments are still going in. Um, this one has a great nose, said Kevin, um, which is cool. Um, slightly saltiness uh, from Graham. Interesting. Yeah, that salinity, that kind of almost dryness on the palate is also what drew me to this cast. Um, really, really do enjoy it. Um, and it's one that, yeah, from my personal perspective, I have, uh, have enjoyed one or two of um, uh, over, over the time that we've had it. Um, uh, again, I have no idea if you cut out when I was explaining this, but there was only, let me hold up the bottle, hopefully it has actually got enough resolution now for you to see it. Only 203 bottles ever made, of which we have two cases, so about 12 bottles left. And I should say, I should say throughout the, um, throughout the evening, all the whiskies you're trying tonight uh, are available on the website in both the large size and the 20CL size. So do tuck in, um, and this one, so we've only got a few bottles left, so if you enjoy it, now's your chance, because uh, it will not be around for much longer, we believe. Um, so, custard cream, says Charlie McCarthy. Hello to you in Ireland, by the way. Uh, hope you are doing well, sir, enjoying the fresh air after our chat the other day. Nice to speak with you as well, by the way. Good to have you on board. Um, uh, I think a couple of the labels for the Glen Tockers may have said nine-year-old instead of ten-year-old. Apologies, typo. My bad. Um, so, oh no, sorry, I remember why that happened. The miniatures, uh, some of the miniatures got bottled um, just before it ticked over to ten, which is when we bottled the full, uh, the full thing. So it was uh, a discrepancy in the timings of bottling. Um, but it's basically the exact same, literally just a few days in it. So uh, apologies, I uh, should have cleared that up earlier. Um, thanks for pointing that out. Um, so the actual release, so the bottled release, is definitely a 10 year old. Uh, I can tell you the exact dates if you are interested like I am. Distilled on the 24th of June 2009, bottled on the 1st of October 2019. So it's 10 years and 3 months. Um, so that is where we're at with that one. Um, super fruity, super uh, kind of creamy, 
for me, just really enjoyable. That dryness is something that I absolutely love. Um, a gorgeous single malt. So, let's crack in to batch number three, our 12 year old. This is our oldest release to date. I don't know why I keep doing that because I'm petrified of dropping these things, especially as the bottles that I hold up are the archive bottles. You may not have noticed, but they all have the bottle number 96 on them. Ken Lindsay will tell you why. <coughs> um, so this is our oldest release to date. Uh, actually came out in March, two days after lockdown was announced. Boom, hello timing, you strike again. Um, and this one was actually following on from uh, demand from, uh, from you guys, from our customers, wanting a really sherry forward whiskey from us. Um, so we got our heads together, we bought a number of casks that are sherry matured. We also um, bought a couple of casks that we're now finishing in sherry casks that we've had made just for them. And so what we're doing is creating uh, sherry cask single malts. But in the meantime, we had a genius idea, I believe, of creating a blended malt. So a blended malt is a blend, sure, as is a single malt. A single malt is a blend of whiskey from one distillery with no grain whiskey in it. Blended scotch is a blend of many distilleries with grain and malt whiskey. And in the middle sits <coughs> blended malt, which is a blend of just malt distilleries and no grain distilleries. So that's what uh, this is, a 12 year old blended malt whiskey. And hopefully, You'll get those sherry notes on the nose. And if I just pull this across, I can actually reach my whiskies without twisting my back any further. Um, for me, it has that kind of classic sherry, winter berry, big, bold, uh, kind of Oloroso forward nose on it. Oh, gorgeous. Let me hold the bottle up for this. Only 100, uh, 150, 150 bottles of this one. Uh, released and yeah just for me stunning example of a sherry cask uh, whiskey that has that beautiful almost wrap of vanilla around it as well to add a little bit of sweetness that comes with those winter fruits and that slightly spicy note from the Oloroso cask so let's see if we've got any comments coming through here we go and lots of chat. Great stuff. Um, yes, this, these are sherry casks. Everything in here has been maturing in sherry casks uh, for a minimum of 12 years. Like we were saying earlier with the, uh, the blended cask, the seven-year-old, everything in the blend is a minimum of 12 years old. Um, so that's how it has to be to have that age statement. And it's something that it's been a learning for us as well of having, um, having a sherry cask in uh, in our range because people really want them they really enjoy them uh, through different degrees um, and for different reasons different you know uh, different kind of uh, flavor profiles different times of the year be it winter be it now on what is an incredibly hot day uh, all the windows open and I am sweating like a madman um, that's fine I'm still going to be drinking whiskey because that's how I roll fundamentally um, spicy shoes says Paul interesting Almonds, smells delicious. My favourite so far, says Rod. Um, yes, Debbie would be lovely sitting by an open fire in winter. Um, if there's, you know, if you, if you get a bottle and you manage to save it until winter, good luck to you. Um, then, indeed, it, it, I, I'm, I've personally kept a couple of bottles of it exactly for that time. Uh, for winter time, just to kind of experience the fullness of it. Um, Smells of sweet, sugary beard, says Kevin. Interesting, interesting. As someone with a beard that is neither sweet nor sugary, I'm intrigued how you know that flavor note. Um, if you would reply to your comment and tell me, I'd be most interested in reading it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily add a lot of water. It's 46.2 ABV. Personally, I think it's had enough in it already to get it to that ABV. A few people saying it's their favourite so far, that kind of gentle spice, that fruitiness, that, that lovely, that multi-layered depth to it as well. I'm, obviously, as with all of them, I'm a massive fan of it, <clears throat> but 
There's something special here, <coughs> and I'm quite glad we did it. <coughs> he says, coughing. Should have taken a water before it. Mm. Excellent. So, we've gone through, interestingly, don't know if anyone noticed, uh, but we've actually gone through four styles of whiskey within four whiskies. We've gone through a single cast, single grain Scotch whiskey. We've gone through a blended Scotch whiskey, which had malt and grain components. On through a single cast, single malt Scotch whiskey in the Glen Tockers. And now we've gone through a blended malt. So that is pretty much the four main um, types of whiskey in the Scotch world. And you've tried them all tonight. Um, I may not have even realised, really. Uh, hopefully I was explaining it as we went. Um, I didn't make a big enough deal of it until just now. So I thought, hey, I'll wait and see, see if anyone mentions it. Um, the 12-year-old Annika, uh, you ask how much it is. It's uh, 55 quid the bottle, and that is free delivery on that um, on the website right now. Um, how do I set the ABV, asks Josh. A uh, very interesting question. Uh, when we started, when we were releasing, Ian McGordon was our first in the Craig Ellicky. Uh, we tried them at car strength. We uh, tried them at, well, real strength, car strength, and then uh, took it all the way down from the low 60s. <laughs> we're never going to bottle that high, I would think, because that is like for drinking fire. Um, then took it all the way down to 46. And we go down in increments, and sometimes, oh, it's a bit too hot, it's a bit too spicy. It's not as well integrated, not as well balanced. Um, and then for our first few releases, 46.2 just worked for us. It was an ABV that, that kind of made sense in our heads because it is exactly how uh, the ABV we got to when we felt, yes, that is what we want. Um, and then in more recent times with the Port Dundas and the Glen Tockers, we've raised it to 48.2 um, and because those two I felt could take a bit more, uh, a bit more oomph and also felt they gave a bit more of a mouthfeel, like a creamier mouthfeel uh, to them, and a buttery one in the Port Dundas, and a creamy one in the Glen Tockers. Um, so let's add that extra 2%, and it made a massive difference, massive difference. Um, so that's what, how we choose them, really. And we will, you know, we'll, we'll vary as we go forward. There's no hard and fast rule. It has to be one, has to be the other, has to be either of them. Um, at some point, we'll release higher ABV ones when it's right for that whiskey. And if it's not right for that whiskey, we won't do it. Simple as. Um, because ultimately, it, as I said earlier, everything we, we do is about the transparency, the honesty, the purity around choosing the cast, maturing them to what we feel is, is, is greatness, and then, and then bottling them when, uh, when, when we feel that the absolute perfect flavour profile. Let's see. <clears throat> Any other questions? Sue says, fruity, smooth, rich, one for the cooler day, autumn, winter, uh, doesn't need water. I completely agree with all of that. Um, and let's see, Jonathan, uh, which whiskey are we on now? I apologise again for all the connection issues. If I could fix it, if I was a technician or a Wi-Fi wizard, I would, fear not. Uh, we're actually on number four, which is the 12-year-old blended malt um, uh, limited edition uh, of which there's only 150 bottles um, and as there's 97 of you on now there's not even enough for one of each of you to buy uh, one left just so you know um, let's see yes Tom you're correct it is the uh, blended malt um, let's see if I've missed any questions as we've gone through yes Martin absolutely the fourth one this one the 12 year old is available on the website right now, greatdrams.com um, is where you'll find it. That's where all of the bottles from tonight are available um, and they, it'll be on free shipping as well. So uh, yeah, we'll aim to get that in the post for you ASAP. Indeed. Um, excellent. Lots of love for that one, which is nice. Uh, I'm a big fan, obviously. And what was quite interesting for us is that this one is probably the the first specific one where it's come from requests from, from you guys, from our customers, um, asking for another sherry cask release. So that's why we put our heads together and said, right, we'll, we'll age through, we'll buy and age through some, uh, some interesting sherry cask single cask releases. 
um, for the future. But in the meantime, let's create a blended malt um, 12 year old and, and put it out there and, and, and see how people like it. And the feedback so far has been off the charts. Awesome. Um, so we've been very, very happy with that. Um, and yeah, it, it goes down really easily, doesn't it? It's one of those whiskies that I just keep giving. Um, I'm actually a bit sad that I had all of mine in one go just then, um, which is a bit of a shame. Um, yes, so let me scroll up again, see if there's any other questions that were missed. Um, I think just before we go on to the final one, what I'll quickly do is recap all four we've gone through so far um, <clears throat> due to the connection glitches, just to make sure you've, uh, you've had an appreciation of all of them. We started with the Port Dundas, which is a 10 year old single cask, single grain Scotch whiskey from a dead distillery. Now remember, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, the stills are gone, the bricks are gone, the stories are gone, sadly. Um, so this was a, a cask from one of the very last batches distilled there in 2009, um, and we just had to have it. When a dead distillery, or silent distillery, whatever you want to call it, um, cask comes available, I, would, I just jumped because it made absolutely no sense not to and it felt like the right thing to do for us and also um, for, uh, for me personally and also for our customers as we were able to get it at a cost which meant we could pass on a, a great whiskey for what I feel is a really reasonable cost on it as well. So <clears throat> then we had our blended cask series number two um, which is uh, only 250 bottles. Uh, there's only 193 of Port Dundas when we re originally released it. So there's, there's nowhere near that many now. 250 of this guy. Uh, it's our seven year old, which has cast from the North British Distillery, the Glen Murray Distillery, and the Knock Do Distillery as well. Now, Knock Do, I'm being the first fill, um, Ruby Port Barrique, um, which gives it the colour, then also gives it that lovely chocolate, a bitter chocolate note. So there's a lot of the fruitiness um, in, the, in the blend itself. Um, I'm being told that it went, but now it's back. Ah, oh, this is a nightmare. Um, so I'll repeat that last one again. You're going to know more about this than I do by the end of this. Uh, blending cask number two um, <laughs> was um, a, a recipe created by myself out of three uh, casks, three different cask types, three different distilleries, three different ages. A 13 year old from the uh, North British distillery is the grain component, an 11 year old from the Glen Murray distillery uh, was one of the single malt components, and then a seven year old uh, first fill, Ruby Port Barrique, was the, uh, the other malt component, single malt component that went into it. Uh, which gives it a lovely bitter chocolate note, that lovely fruity note, and pretty much all of the colour, I should say. That kind of rosé tint to it comes from that port cask. Um, and then the Glen Murray adds that, that vanilla note and, and maybe part of the apples and the freshness. And then the North British, for me, added that kind of really smooth wrap, almost hug of a whiskey around it. Um, <clears throat> and let's see, number three was the Glen Tockers. Um, the Glen Tockers single cask, single malt, Scotch whiskey, 10 year old, originally 203 bottles um, produced, of which there was only 12 left at the beginning of this evening. Um, and I have no idea how thirsty you guys are, if you even can see much of this, and how excited you've got about drinking these whiskies. But yes, that one won't be around too much longer. Um, it's from one of the last remaining near total manual distilleries in Speyside. And for us, really fruity, really creamy, and an amazing example of what a space size single malt can be. Then we moved on to number four. Um, and number four is our 12 year old blended malt. So this is a blend just from malt distilleries. And only 150 bottles of this one ever made. It was released two days after lockdown was announced. Um, and it's our sherry cask. Um, forward, uh, kind of sherry cask, uh, mature uh, blended malt that uh, is predominantly Speyside um, whiskies, and ultimately uh, was driven by you guys asking us for a sherry cask 
um, matured whiskey in our range. And so that's why we did it. Uh, we listened to your feedback and I'll listen to all of it about the connection issues and work out how the hell to fix that for next time. Um, again, apologies. Um, so hopefully that's been a reasonable catch up for those of you who may have cut in and cut out at different times for the four that we've gone through so far. We're gonna hit the Ben Riak in a second, but I'm gonna first check and see if you guys have got any further questions before we move on to the last one. And uh, let's see. Right. Excellent. Paul Dundas, now elderflowery. Interesting, says Graham. That's a good note, actually. Um, that's it. Absolutely. Ah, oh, Ben Barnard. What a lovely man. Absolutely love your knowledge, passion, integrity. However, missed a third of tonight due to tech. Whiskey is first, first class and we'll try again. I'm so sorry, Ben. I really am. Hit me up on my email um, if you have any questions and I will do, um, I'll do my absolute best to answer them uh, um, as soon as I can for you. Um, let's see. I love a good whiskey hug, says Jonathan. Same here. Same here. Uh, Jamie says, can you post a description of each and its region after live stream? Um, as it's not been the easiest to follow, absolutely. Um, they, they, most of them should have been on the flyer that went out with the uh, packs, and they're all on the website, um, either for you to buy, but also for all the real detailed information, right down to distillation dates, bottling dates, um, and all of that kind of stuff as well, including flavour notes and prices. Um, so don't worry, and I will, uh, I will post the prices and the links into here as well um, at the end of the stream too. So, let's move on to number five, Ben Riak. This, an old champion of a dram. Um, only 213 bottles of this one ever made, and it's a five-year-old. And we were so happy with it at five years old that we bottled it. And so we don't, as in not bottle it, it's like, yeah, more bottle it as in like, go, go, go. Um, totally different things. And so this one, there's only six bottles left, or there were at the beginning of this uh, live stream. So fingers crossed, some of you have actually heard anything about this evening, about the whiskies, and we'll be able to, uh, to get online if you enjoy this one. And so for me, and we always leave the smoky one to last, or mostly do. Sometimes I mix it up between number four and five. Um, but yes, the, um, the fifth one from Ben Ria, five years old, distilled in Speyside at the only continually peated distillery in Speyside. And it's one that is just superb, um, the distillery itself. And this, and I noticed it when we bottled it, that initial hit of toffee, I absolutely loved. Um, that toffee and that barbecue smoke that wraps around it, that gorgeous kind of, kind of signature kind of vanilla note coming through it as well. So hopefully you're getting that on the nose that toffee, that almost toffee apple note coming through, that freshness of an orchard apple too. Mm. Oh, I mean, I love that. It's not the smokiest thing in the world, it's not like a Lafroy or an Ard Beg, but it was never meant to be. It was our first smoky whiskey, that's something we're deeply proud of. And it's had an amazing amount of incredible feedback um, since it was launched as well. And that juiciness, that kind of juicy fruitiness on the finish, I just, I love. Right, for me, it lingers, and that smoke wrapped in the fruit, just gorgeous stuff. Um, so yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Mm. Mm. Rod says the Ben Riek is a cracker, lovely. Um, uh, Christian says, save the best to last. Absolutely. Jonathan, love it. Paul, excellent whiskey. Um, issues with the tech. Again, apologies. Um, but we will be having another one of these um, on uh, June the 12th. And by then, we will have fixed it. Believe me, that is basically tomorrow's job now. So the to-do list. We'll work on how the hell to make this work. Because it has worked up until now. But for some reason tonight... Whatever's happened locally with internet has destroyed what I wanted to do. So again, massive apologies. And I hope that most of you have at least enjoyed the whiskies and have 
been able to follow some of it. Um, I'll try and do one more recap of all five in a minute. Um, once I've just kind of checked in to see what um, what what uh, what other people are saying. Smoky Cream Fudge says Jill, love it. Kevin Portland, that was my favourite. Uh, Jill says this is her favourite too. Um, let's see, Debbie. I know there have been technical difficulties, but the whiskey has been excellent, and the knowledge and enthusiasm fantastic. Thank you so much, Debbie. Truly appreciate it. Thanks for your understanding as well. Um, that, that's that's greatly appreciated. Um, what is everyone's favourite from this evening? Hit it up in the comments. Let's just let's see what any thoughts are. Um, and also, uh, just to reiterate, every single bottle from tonight is available on greatdrams.com uh, to buy in the full size format or the 20CL format, um, and they'll be shipped out as soon as lo logistically possible. Um, so yeah, if you loved any of them enough to buy any, please do. Um, any of the large size. Uh, um, it's over 55 quid, I think it is, which most of them uh, were free shipping as well. So you don't have to worry about that stuff, which is awesome. And so, oh, Mike was getting a tequila vibe from, uh, from the Ben Riak. Interesting. Uh, Lewis says 45123. So the batch three, the 12 year old blended malt, then the Ben Riak, and then Dundas, uh, seven year old and Glen Tockers. Excellent. Um, people enjoying the whiskey, that's always lovely to hear. Um, then talkers by a head and a nose, says Graham. Um, ha, Andy, oh that's a tough one. It's been brilliant, thank you. Thank you. Um, learn loads. Question, what's my favourite whiskey? Now, here's one. I will never give a straight answer to that. Never. Um, not because I'm awkward. Or because I like being a pain in the hoop. I, uh, I don't necessarily believe there is a favourite whiskey pretty much for, for any whiskey person. If you think about it, most of us on this uh, video um, will uh, have different uh, flavour um, preferences. All of our palates have been on different journeys, so we've been to different parts of the world when we were still able to do so. We've been to different events, we've tried different foods. Some of us love really fruity stuff, some of us love really sweet stuff. Some of us love really, really smoky stuff. And some of us hate all of those and really like sherry stuff. And fortunately for what I do, I pretty much love all of them, as I said, apart from that overly floral, hay fevery uh, uh, whiskey flavour profile, which I just don't get. But apart from that, I love pretty much every whiskey for different reasons. Um, and there are moments when I want to sit with a Lafroy. There are moments when I want to sit with an uh, uh, Aberfeldy, an Abelauer, for example. A Craig Elegy is always up there for me, um, as is on the blended side, like a Dewar's or a Ballantine's or a Shivers, um, or anyone from our range, which I was trying not to say because it's always a bit corny, isn't it? Um, or Glenfiddich is one of the distilleries that got me into this. So, you know, for me it depends on the time of day, the people I'm with, the weather, although that's less dependent now because I'll drink whiskey at any, any time of the day, any weather, it doesn't really matter. Um, and also, you know, what, uh, what kind of mood I'm in as well. And think about this as well. It, whatever experience you're having now with a whiskey, um, hopefully it's great. Um, but when you have that same whiskey tomorrow, or share it with someone else in three days' time, that'll be a totally different experience. Because you'll be in a different mindset. You'll be thinking about different things. Uh, you'll have eaten different things in that day. You'll be potentially with someone else. And so your mind is totally different. So that same whiskey would be experienced in a variety of different ways. And so that's why I can never give a, a really straight answer to, well, that's my favourite whiskey. Um, because there's so many of them. Um, yeah, so, sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Ah, oh, Sue says, Ben Rhea, the favourite, and the blended malt second, but all great dram, so thank you. Well, thank you, Sue. Um, uh, I'm going to have to actually try and focus on what you're saying there, Rod. Invidious. Excellent word after five whiskies. Hell yeah. What a word indeed. Right, let me, uh, let me scroll back up again. You guys are all typing very quickly whilst I was answering that one. Um, <laughs> Jill says, next, do it in, next time do it in the morning. Maybe less internet traffic. I do love a breakfast dram. Not every day, but you know. Um, James says, the 12-year-old 
is excellent. Um, Port on Das, Ben Riek, Glen Tockers. Uh, it's a nice spread for virtually all of them, which is quite cool. Um, right, let's scroll back down again. Favourite was uh, Glen Tockers, says Kim, until the Ben Riek. Ah, interesting, you got me there. Um, Tim Hill says they're all great. The Port on Das was my favourite. Going to buy a bottle now. Cheers, Tim. Thank you very much, sir. Glad you enjoyed this evening. Uh, Paul said the Glen Tockers. Uh, David, the last one, the Ben Riek. Lendid's cast was a banger. Um, <laughs> Leighton, I seem to have slightly wobbly feet. I know the feeling. I do know the feeling. Um, let's see. I love the whiskey choices, says Jamie. All really different, but love them all. And that's, that's a very good point. When we create our new releases, we always look to do something different. Because for me, it keeps it, me interested, keeps Kirstie interested, keeps our team interested. Um, when they, you know, we've got a couple of guys who help us at events and stuff. But also, it's we found since we started, it keeps our customers and our loyal customers and our friends interested as well. Um, strangely enough, a lot of our customers end up becoming friends because we, you know, we end up talking about whiskey so much it's hard not to be. And by doing different releases every time, it really does um, kind of broaden all of our experience within whiskey and um, broadens my experience in creating them and Kirsty's as well. Um, but then also means that we're trying different flavour profiles all the time. Um, we get a lot of sad emails when, when whiskeys sell out, by the way. Oh, what? I wanted another one. It's like, well, a limited edition. When they're gone, they genuinely are gone. We can't recreate them. We can't just magic them up. The only time we've ever had additional bottles available for anything was when we tidied up the archive. And I was quite bluntly told, by Kirsty, let's be fair, um, that I was no longer allowed to keep... Um, I think the original, the very first release, I said, I want to keep five cases. That's 30 with 30 bottles, um, and, you know, for posterity. And then that got whittled down to six bottles. And now we only keep either two or three of every single release. So, yeah, we had a, a bit of an archive tidy up a few, uh, a while back, on this one. Like, it all, all merges nowadays, isn't it? And uh, that was the only time any of the others were released uh, or put back into circulation. Um, and now they're gone. So once they're gone, they are gone. Um, so Ben Riak and the Glen Tockers are likely the next two to be completely gone. Um, and then we'll see what happens next. All right, what else is happening? Um, have you tried a Brooklady? I have tried. I've tried many Brooklady. I was drinking one, a 30-year-old Brooklady last night, actually. Um, but uh, we haven't got a cast of it because, uh, to be brutally honest, it's impossible to get hold of without having to sell a kidney. Um, Matthew says, thanks Greg, here's to the next one, and here's to you sir, I'll see you on our Zoom whiskey tasting on Friday evening. Um, excellent sir. Uh, Glen Tockers was a revelation for Charlie, happy days, always good to hear. Um, and yeah, exactly done, that's exactly it. Great to try five different whiskies at once to see the massive difference in them all. Thanks for a great night. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of it as well. Um, Sean. Yes, you can stream this after the event. Um, it'll be on this Facebook page um, going forward. We're not going to, no plans to delete it. And we'll also, um, we'll also try and download the file so we can put it onto uh, YouTube. Um, ah, James, I enjoy the tasting. Thank you for delivering the whiskey to my house. <laughs> it was nice. Thank you, sir. Back to the Paul Dundas, says Rod, lots of toffee. Interesting. I get that when I go back to it after a while. So it's, it's got more... More time to breathe and more time to open up. I do see, I do feel that that one has, um, uh, has, has some more kind of character comes through. Um, and excellent. So, learn a lot. Definitely return with my whiskey club in the Vale in Airdrie. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, Jill would we'll definitely do this again. So much better than ordering five different drams in a bar. <laughs> the relaxed chat and knowledge helps. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Um, cool. So, with that, um, I just want to thank you all again for joining us, for being persistent uh, in sticking with me through this uh, slightly challenging internet time, um, but also more importantly for taking the time out of your evening um, to, to spend dramming with me. It's something that I desperately love, to, desperately enjoy doing, and it's made even better by being able to share our whiskies with new people. So thank you for that. Hope to have, uh, hope you to, uh, do uh, get involved in any of our future tastings and uh, yeah, have a great rest of your evening 
And finally, I hope you all stay safe, well, and we can all ride this, uh, this madness together. Cheers and good night.